Here's a lesson on trig identities. An identity is a special type of math equation that is true for all values of the given variables. And before we get into proving trig identities, let me just make it clear what an identity is by showing you two different simple equations. Now, one of these equations is an identity, meaning it's true for all possible values of x. Can you spot which one? Let me quickly solve each of them so we can see. Starting with the one on the left, if I brought my variable terms to the left and my constant terms to the right, I would see that 2x equals 10, meaning that x is equal to 5. Getting a single answer of x equals 5 means that that is the only number that when subbed in for x makes the left side of the equation equal to the right side of the equation. Any other number subbed in for x, the left and right sides of the equation would not equal each other. That means that this equation is not an identity. But if we were to solve this equation, I would start by distributing my one third and distributing the two. You should see now that the left side and the right side of the equation look exactly the same as each other, which means no matter what I subbed in for these x's, the left and right sides of the equation would be equal to each other. If you tried to keep solving this equation, bringing the variable terms to the left and the constant terms to the right, you would see that we have zero times x equals zero. And for this equation, zero times what is equal to zero? Well, zero times anything is equal to zero, which means there are an infinite number of solutions. Anything subbed in for x into this equation would make it true, which means anything subbed in for x into this equation would make it true. So that equation is an identity. Hopefully now that you understand the difference between what makes an equation an identity or not an identity, we can now work in some trig functions into our equations and try and prove some trig identities. And in order to start proving trig identities, you're going to have to remember that we can rewrite trig ratios in terms of x and y. So looking at this diagram, I know that if I rotate some angle theta from an initial arm, the terminal arm will intersect the circle at some point that has an x and a y coordinate. And notice to get to this point, I would have to move x units in that direction and y units in that direction. So I could turn this into a right angle triangle with side lengths of x, y, and the hypotenuse is the radius of the circle. And using your understanding of SOHCAHTOA, you should remember that sine of an angle equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So y divided by r. Cosine of an angle equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, meaning cosine of theta equals x over r. And tan of an angle equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, meaning y divided by x. And now that we've reviewed that, let's see if we can prove our first fundamental trig identity. Let me actually rearrange these and make them bigger so I can reference them. And let's try and prove that this equation, tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta, is an identity, meaning we have to prove that that equation is true for all values of theta. And to do that, the general process for proving an identity is to separate the equation into a left side and a right side. So now that I've separated the equation into its left side, and its right side, I'm actually going to draw a vertical line between the sides to show that I'm going to be working with these sides completely separately. We're not allowed to move terms between sides of this equation. We're not trying to solve for anything. We're just trying to prove that in fact, this side of the equation is the exact same thing as this side of the equation. And how we do that is using other identities that we know are true. I know that tan of theta is equal to y over x, so I'll replace it with y over x. And then on the right side of the equation, sine of theta is equal to y over r, and cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And then on the right side, when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, we can rewrite that as a product if we keep the fraction that's in the numerator and multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction that's in the denominator. And then I have a factor of r being divided by a factor of r. That's one. I can cancel them out. And all I'm left with on the right side of the equation is a y being divided by x. And now you can see that when evaluating tan of an angle, you're just doing the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. And if you were doing sine of an angle divided by cosine of an angle, you're also doing the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So that shows that the right side and the left side of this equation are the exact same expression. They're going to be true for all possible values of theta. 
Once you get the left and right sides to look identical, you finished your proof. You can just write left side equals right side. Let's move on and try a second one. To prove this identity, we're going to use the same identities we used for the previous question. So I've rewritten them off to the side so we can reference them. And now I'll start the proof of this identity by separating it into its left side and right side. Now on the left side of the equation, I see a sine ratio squared and a cos ratio squared. So I'll replace those sine and cos ratios with what I see that they're equal to. And then let me simplify this expression by simplifying each of the powers. When the base of my power is a quotient, the exponent goes on both the numerator and denominator. So this would simplify to y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. And since I have a common denominator, I can write this as a single fraction over that common denominator. And remember, my goal is to show that this is actually the exact same as this. So somehow this expression is always one. Well, how can it always be one? The only way it could always be one is if y squared plus x squared was equal to r squared. And if we look back up to this triangle, you'll see based on Pythagorean theorem, this side squared plus this side squared would equal the hypotenuse squared. Therefore, x squared plus y squared does equal r squared. So back in my proof of this identity, I can replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. And now I have something divided by itself, which is always going to be equal to one. So what I've proven, I've proven that sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of an angle is always going to be equal to one, which means this equation is an identity. The left and right sides are exactly equal to each other for all values of the variable. So I'll write left side equals right side. And then we'll move on to our next identity. But actually, before we do that, let's summarize in a table what we know so far. That identity that we just proved is called the Pythagorean identity. And it's called that because we use the Pythagorean theorem to prove it. The other identity we proved is the quotient identity. Tan of an angle equals sine over cos of that same angle. And because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, that would mean that cotangent is equal to the reciprocal of this, which would just be cos over sine. And then also, you should know your reciprocal identities. We learned those earlier in the unit. So now that we know these identities, we can use these whenever we want to help prove other more complicated identities. And we might also want to use these tips as well. Rearranging the Pythagorean identity could give us these versions of the Pythagorean identity. We could square both sides of our quotient identities or square both sides of our reciprocal identities. And here are also some helpful tips that you can try and follow while proving identities. It's often useful to try and change everything to be written in terms of sine and cos ratios. If you have fractions being added or subtracted, you can get a common denominator to combine fractions. Also, look out for difference of squares. And don't forget your exponent rules. So we'll use those tips and those identities and these identities to help us prove more identities, such as this one right here. And when starting to prove an identity, we always want to separate into the left side and right side of the equation. So apparently this equation is an identity, meaning it's true for all possible values of the variable. And that would only be the case if the left side was exactly equal to the right side, meaning this expression must actually equal one, no matter what theta is. So we need to prove that by using other identities we know are true. Well, tip number one was to rewrite all ratios in terms of sine and cos. So I could use the quotient identity to replace tan of theta with sine of theta over cos of theta. And then a cosine theta being divided by itself is equal to one so I can cancel them out. And all I'm left with now is sine of theta divided by sine of theta, which is always going to be equal to one. So I've shown that the left side of the equation is always equal to one, which is exactly what the right side of the equation is. So I've proven that this is an identity because the left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation. So if I were to graph the left side of this equation, it would just be a horizontal line through one, showing that the value of this is one for any possible value of the variable. And now let's try part B. I'll separate into left side, right side. 
And remember, I draw this vertical line down the middle just as a reminder that we're not allowed to move terms between the sides of this equation. I can't take this one and move it over here. When doing a proof, we work with the sides completely separately and show that they are in fact equivalent expressions. And I'll do that by starting by changing this tan ratio using the quotient identity, I'll change it to sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And on the right, I have a reciprocal identity. Secant of theta is equal to one over cos of theta, which means that secant squared of theta is equal to one over cos squared of theta. Now that everything's written in terms of sine or cos, I can look to try and combine these two terms together by getting a common denominator. So I'll rewrite this one, I'll erase it, and I'll write it as cos squared over cos squared so that I have a common denominator. Cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta is one, I haven't changed its value. I've just rewritten it so it has the same denominator as that expression. And now I can collect them together by adding their numerators and keeping the common denominator. And then hopefully you recognize that what we have in the numerator is the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equal to one. Now, since the left side and the right side of the equation are exactly the same, I know the equation would be true for any value of the variable, meaning this is an identity. So I'll write left side equals right side, and we'll go ahead and try another one. I'll separate into left and right side, I'll leave the left side as it is, but on the right side, I see that I have a difference of squares. And if you remember that rule, you know this would simplify to one squared minus sine squared. And now what I have here is a rearranged version of the Pythagorean identity. Based on the Pythagorean identity, I know that one minus sine squared is actually equal to cosine squared. So one minus sine squared of x is equal to cos squared of x. So now that I see that the left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation, I know that this equation is an identity. And let's move on to part D. I'll separate into left and right side. This is the first identity where it may not be obvious where to start. Everything's already written in terms of sine and cos, and there are no fractions that need to be combined together. But remember, there was one tip I told you is to look out for difference of squares. And you might not see it right away, but Based on the Pythagorean identity, I know that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. And now what I have in the top, that 1, I could think of it as a 1 squared. So what I have is a difference of squares. That would factor to 1 minus cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x. And now these factors of 1 minus cosine of x can cancel with each other. And on the left side of the equation, all that we're left with is one plus cosine of x, which is exactly equal to the right side of the equation, which means the equation would be true for any value of x. So this equation is an identity because the left side is equal to the right side. On to part e. I'll separate into left side, right side. And on the left, I see two trig ratios that are not sine and cos. So I'll replace secant of theta with one over cosine of theta. And using the quotient identity, I know that cotangent of theta would equal cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. These cosine ratios would cancel out, and I also have sine theta divided by sine theta, which means that the left side of the equation is just equal to 1, which is the exact same as the right side of the equation. So since the left and right sides of the equation are equal to each other, we've proven that part E is an identity. And now moving on to F, our last identity of the lesson. I'll separate into left and right side. There are a couple things I can do here. Let me start on the right side of the equation. I'm going to change this tan ratio based on the quotient identity to sine x over cos x. And this cos x is actually a cos x over one if that helps with our next step. And this two could just multiply up with that sine x. And now that I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I can evaluate that by leaving the top fraction and multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. So multiply by one over cos x. And then simplifying this product, I would have two times sine x divided by cos x times cos x is cosine squared of x. Now somehow I need to show that the left side of the equation is exactly equal to this. Instead of trying to continue working on the right side, I think it would be easier if we started working on the left side 
and see if we can try and make it equal to that expression. Since I have two fractions being subtracted, I think I'm going to get a common denominator. So I'll multiply this fraction in the numerator and denominator by 1 plus sine x, and then this fraction in the numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine x. So you can see now that my fractions have a common denominator of 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. So I'll be able to combine the fractions and write them over that common denominator. And in the numerator, I have 1 plus sine x times 1, which is 1 plus sine x, minus 1 times 1 minus sine x. So minus 1 minus sine x. And then in the numerator, if I distribute this minus sign, I would have 1 plus sine x minus 1 plus sine x. And that's all over my common denominator, which notice is a difference of squares. I could write that as 1 squared minus sine squared of x. And now in the numerator, I have a 1 minus 1, which is 0, and a sine x plus a sine x, which is 2 sine x. And in the denominator, 1 minus sine squared x, well, based on the Pythagorean identity, I know that's equal to cosine squared of x. And there we have it. Working on the left and right side completely separately, I've shown that both the left and right are equal to 2 sine x divided by cosine squared of x. So the left and right sides are going to be equal to each other for all possible values of x, meaning that equation is an identity. And now moving on, there are actually two more identities here. I'll separate to left and right side. And notice I actually rewrote sine x plus cos x squared as sine x plus cos x times sine x plus cos x. And same for this binomial being squared. I just wrote two factors of that binomial. And I did that because I'm going to have to expand this into standard form by finding the products of each of those pairs of binomials. So for this first pair of binomials, I would have to do sine squared plus sine cos plus another sine cos plus cos squared plus. Now I need the product of those binomials. That would be sine squared minus sine cos minus another sine cos plus cos squared. And then one important thing to notice here is that I have a 2 sine x cos x minus a 2 sine x cos x. So those terms will cancel with each other. And what I'm left with is sine squared plus cos squared plus sine squared plus cos squared. And what we have here is actually just two Pythagorean identities. Sine squared x plus cos squared x is always equal to 1. So what I have is just 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. Since left side equals right side, we've now proven that identity. And now on to the last one. I'll separate into left side, right side. I'll start by rewriting the tan and secant in terms of sine and cos. So based on the quotient identity, I know tan x equals sine x over cos x, and secant is equal to 1 over cos. And on the left side of the equation, I have two fractions being added, so I'll get a common denominator. And now I have a common denominator, so I can combine the fractions over that common denominator by adding their numerators. And then in the numerator, I'll distribute the sine x to get sine x plus sine squared x plus cos times cos is cos squared. And then I still have my common denominator. And we should notice that what we have here, sine squared x plus cos squared x, is the Pythagorean identity. That's equal to 1. And then this sine x plus 1, we have an equivalent factor of that in the denominator, 1 plus sine x. So I can cancel those out. And what I'm left with is just 1 divided by cos x, which is exactly equal to the right side of the equation. We've proved that the left side is equal to the right side, proving that that equation is an identity. So there you have it. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what a trig identity is and some ideas of how to prove them. The only way to get good at proving them though is with practice. So make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and download the accompanying worksheet so that you can practice these and become more comfortable with them.